Hi and welcome to the video. Firstly, thanks to those of you who watched my last video and even greater thanks to those of you who subscribed to my channel. It's really much appreciated. So this video, as you probably saw from the thumbnail, is about my new project, which I called The Beast. It started when I was thinking about how to make a car similar to my existing design go even faster. And by faster, I mean 200 mile an hour fast. That seems to be that hard to reach goal in RC speed running that maybe with my unique car design, I might be able to get there. I'm really excited to tell you about how I'm gonna use all my engineering experience to design and develop this vehicle to meet that goal. So next I'm gonna tell you about how I'm actually gonna do this and, and what my design process is. Firstly, I like to start with some calculations. So I work out what air resistance I can expect at uh, different speeds and then how that balances with the with the drive forces. Um, I work out what the power required is in, in terms of electrical power and also work out what motor KV would suit me best and, th and then I can really start selecting components. This sizing process actually started before I even made my first vehicle when I was researching drone motors. I found out about this type of drone called a, a Beast Quad. You can see one here being flown line of sight. These are quite large uh, quadcopters uh, with insanely huge power systems. Like Typically they'll have, they'll have 400 amp speed controls, one for each motor, running on 8 to 12 cells. So they can kick out some serious power and you can see from this video they literally just rip the sky apart. And they're quite awesome things. So I spec'd up a vehicle based on the, this sort of powertrain and it came up quite large. It, it was looking like it was going to be at least a metre long, quite, quite big and heavy. And at the time I wasn't quite ready for that so I decided to start small. But now's the time to go big. It's going to be two times the size of my existing vehicle and have about ten times the power which is going to help it uh, fight against the, the aerodynamic drag forces as it tries to reach that goal of 200 miles an hour. The output of my calculation stage really is the list of components that are going to power my beast car. But of course they need to actually go together in the vehicle. And the way I work that out and plan that is with computer aided design or CAD. So I'm going to show you how I've got started with that next. I find with any project where you try to develop it in CAD, the most important thing is just to get something into the CAD system that's roughly the right shape and then you can improve it from there. So what I've got here is just a, a basic chassis um, with a common sub-assembly on all four corners. So if I just bring that up on its own, uh, you can see that consists of just um, like an L bracket. Uh, the motor, whose uh, cab model I actually found on on shape that someone else had already designed. Um, I've got a wheel adapter in there and also a wheel, which again I found a basic model that someone had done on on shape already, and I think I added my own tyre to it. This early design includes uh, like a central spine and uh, these quite big spring pieces here, which I'm probably going to change. Uh, and I've modelled up one of the batteries to help me position them in the, in the chassis. Body-wise, I've made a lovely smooth shape so far that uh, envelops the wheels. Uh, a nice sort of teardrop profile which should be quite aerodynamic. I've tried to reduce the frontal area by having this little dip in the middle. Um, but it still has plenty of clearance to the to the uh, tyres there. In fact, I'm not, oh yeah, but yeah, looking from the side there isn't actually much clearance there. I think I've aimed for 10 millimetres from, from the tyre to the top of the bodywork. Uh, similar at the rear as well. So you've seen how I have created my initial CAD proposal and you can see how ba basic it is, the, the thing that I start with. In later videos I'll show you how that develops and you should see it mature into something that looks like an actual finished vehicle that could be manufactured. You've also seen the, how I came up with the body shape and the next thing I'm going to do with that is to assess its aerodynamic performance with a tool called CFD. So I'm going to explain that in detail next. So what do I mean by CFD? Well, what I mean is actually building up a virtual wind tunnel uh, for me to test my car design in. And you can see that wind tunnel here. So if I, if I zoom in, 
you can see half of my car shape cut out of the wind tunnel itself. The reason it's half a car is because I use symmetry to reduce the size of the model and improve the runtime. Um, so the way this works is, in a, in a virtual way, um, the air is set to come in at one end of this block uh, and go out the other end. It's got a symmetry constraint on that side there where the car's cut in half by. The floor itself, um, that rolls with the wind so that relative to the car that's moving um, and the wheels even rotate as well to, to simulate any effects arising from that. So once that's all set up you can mesh it and then run it to get your results. So when I say meshing I mean break this huge volume um, of, the, of the wind tunnel down into tiny little blocks and, and the way CFD works is it evaluates equations for all of these tiny little, little blocks uh, related to what goes in and out of them um, and how they, how they balance. Um, and it uses that to work out you know, how the airflow changes as it goes through this volume and around this shape that I cut out of it to represent my car. You can see how, how many of these little blocks there are and because the way you set it up, you set it up to have more refinement around your actual uh, test area and you can see that there, the, the uh, refinement gets smaller as you, as you get to that the car shape. Uh, as a result, there's 10 million of those little blocks in this model for me to give, give me the results I want. So once the results are available, which takes, takes probably four to five hours for the, for the model to run, the most useful results for me are actually quite bore, boring to look at because they're this, this graph of how um, the force is acting on the car change um, as time goes on. So what I do is, um, so this is for the entire simulation run, which is a thousand seconds long. I'll zoom in on a period where there's not too much variation from probably turbulent flow. Um, and then I can get um, the forces acting on my car in, in all the different directions. So drag force is in the Y direction. So I can see that I've managed to keep the drag force down quite low. So 17 newtons that is which is equivalent to about 1.7 kilograms but remember that's for half the car so I'd have to double that to um, give the full amount of drag of the vehicle. Uh, then I've got a lift which is uh, the Z force there which is 35 newtons which is actually pretty bad. That's showing that the car's going to be close to taking off at the, at the speed that I'm looking at. Um, I also look at the, the moments acting on the vehicle. It shows where the, the lift force is acting, so it allows me to work out whether the lift force is acting more at the front or at the rear, which has actually proved really useful. Uh, so now let's look at the more interesting looking results, which is the solution field, it's called on this. Right, so here we are with the results. Um, this is pressure that's plotted on the surface of the car so you can see that, as you'd expect there's high pressure at the front because of the air hitting it at the front as it's going along uh, if you look underneath as well there's really high pressure at the front of both wheels which is also what you'd expect to see um, what is not a good thing is the is the green color on the top there that's low pressure so that explains why we're seeing the the lift the lift force that was on the force plots so we've got low pressure on the top high pressure underneath on the tires and on, on this bit under here it's going to cause the thing to to lift off and, and try and leave the ground so that is something that i'll be working on on subsequent designs of the of the beast bodywork uh, now i want to show you some even more interesting types of results which is where we can do this thing called particle tracing I really like this because it helps you visualize the, the flow around the car. So this is the particle trace plot of the results. So you can, you can see what it, what it does is just gives uh, like streamlines. It's what, I suppose it's what you might have done in the past with, um, with smoke in a, in a real wind tunnel. But it allows you to see how the, how the air is actually flowing over the vehicle. Um, you can see the air is moving really nice and smoothly over the top. Um, and around the side but then underneath them um, the air is getting quite badly disturbed by the wheels and then getting pushed out to the side. Um, oh, trying to keep the 
it's the under control. Um, and then there's a little bit of turbulence at the rear there, which is going to add a little bit of drag. So that's CFD then, and the way you use it to improve your car design is just to put different designs in and see what happens really. And then from doing that a few times, you learn what gives the effects that you're looking for, um, and then you can work out how to optimize your design to, to meet your goals. You might be able to tell that I'm a bit of a beginner to the CFD analysis. I'm, I'm learning as I go, and uh, I've got my work cut out to turn uh, my plane that I've designed so far, hopefully into something with a bit of downforce so it can stay on the ground. The next step is to feed the results back into the calculations. Um, and I've been able to do that and even adding in the downforce effect. And that shows this potential to accelerate the car harder as it goes faster, like a, like a Formula One car might do. And the powerful thing is that you can then loop around this development process to, to improve the vehicle and optimise it. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to show that in, in my next video. Oh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that insight into how my Beast project is progressing. Um, and I'll be back with more updates in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, there's um, a bit of a time lapse of how I rebuilt my, my body shell, which you can see on the, on the, on the side there. That was actually shattered in the, one of my round one crashes. Um, but I reassembled it so I could hang it on the wall. Because I, I like it, it brings back good memories. So thanks again, bye.